Welcome to Read by Robin. Today we will be reading from the book The Wicked and the Damned. This is a book from the archives of Warhammer Horror, which is a subset of the Greater Warhammer book series. This is actually an anthology which contains three different authors named. However, the piece we will be reading is split up into four parts throughout the book and does not have an author listed. Due to the length of these pieces and due to the length of the videos I'm allowed to be putting up on YouTube, we will be reading one part at a time for these smaller pieces. And I don't know at what point I will be able to read the larger pieces for you. So we are going to begin now, The Wicked and the Damned. This four part piece is called Silence. So this is Silence, part one. The planet's name was Silence. It was a world of gray pillars and dour statues, and the shadows that stretched between them. Amid these shadows, strange shapes prowled about on stick legs. Their gilded funerary masks occasionally caught the soft light of the ceremonial lumens, and their gray shrouds rustled as they went about their eternal labors. Silence was a world of the dead, a cemetery world. Great repositories of the fallen stretched high into the pallid skies and deep beneath the skin of the earth. Towering mausoleums containing hundreds, if not thousands, of the dead lined the wide silent boulevards. Stone pits with shallow nooks housed paupers and mendicants in their untold millions. It, as it was in life, so it was in death. The air of the cemetery world was cold and clammy, heavy with mist and the lingering smell of incense. It hung over the streets, hiding the stink of decay. The fatal shapes of cybernetic cherubs drifted on tattered wings, their faces like golden skulls. They dragged smoking censers through the dark and the quiet, murmuring repetitive hymns in shrill, tinny voices. Condensation ran in unceasing ripples across the glassaic windows that overlooked the winding thoroughfares and avenues below. The world was all but entombed in stone and glass. It had died centuries ago, but there was no one to notice. The only inhabitants were the cyber cherubs and the mortuary servitors, with their spindly legs and shrouded inhuman bodies. Like all servitors, they did not live so much as persist. They crept through the tombs, ensuring that all was as it should be and everything was in its proper place. They went about their task in utter silence, save for the dull clangor of the funeral bells that draped their forms. They paused in these efforts only to watch as those few pilgrims who came to silence traversed the grim fields of stone and statuary. Sometimes, for reasons of their own, they would follow these visitors at a distance, as if curious of their intentions or perhaps an anticipation of the inevitable. It was the latter that was foremost in Egan Valimar's mind as he walked alone through the streets of silence. He was tall and narrow in the way of some men, and his shadow stretched far in his wake. The mortuary servitors watched him, and he watched them in turn with a soldier's vigilance. He pulled the collar of his greatcoat tight, fighting the persistent chill. The coat was black, as was the peaked commissar's cap he wore. Valimar was angry. He was often angry. At the moment, he was angry because he was on silence, and not with his new regiment. He was angry because he had been ordered to come, though he wasn't sure why or by whom. And he was angry because his head hurt. It had been hurting for some time, a persistent migraine flowering within his skull. Sometimes he grew so used to the ache that he forgot all about it. And then a sudden sharp pain would remind him of its presence. It dug into the meat of him, making it hard to think of anything else. He stopped and rubbed his brow, trying to ease the increased throbbing in his temples. Beneath the pressure of his fingers, it receded, though only slightly. It was the stress of his recent posting. He sighed and lowered his hands. I'm sorry, Colonel, he murmured. He wondered if that was why he had been ordered to come to silence, though he could not imagine who might have wanted him to do so. He had tried to find out before his departure, but the Departmento Monitorum was an impenetrable labyrinth of bureaucracy, one he had no patience to navigate. Better to simply go along, rather than risk being derelict in his duty, and, in any event, if he was here, it was where he was supposed to be. He looked up, 
Statues lined the avenue, forgotten heroes of the Imperium, standing atop wide plinths marked with their deeds and date of death, or, in some cases, the estimated date of death. It was hard to tell, sometimes. Imperial bureaucracy was a slow current. All things eventually reached the sea, but in their own time. A saying of the colonel's. Valimar frowned, annoyed by the thought. The colonel was dead, and sentiment was a coward's refuge. Funerary bells clanged somewhere close by. He turned, suddenly tense. Mist hung thick between the statues and tombs, all but obscuring the way he'd come. He made to hurry on, but the bells came again, closer now, to his left. He stopped and turned, itching to draw his weapon. A sudden sense of paranoia flashed through him. Perhaps this was a trap. Perhaps his enemies had summoned him here. And where better to kill a man than a cemetery world? He laughed sourly. They'd have no more luck now than they'd had before. The God Emperor watched over him. He knew it as he knew nothing else. The one certainty in an otherwise ambiguous existence. As if reading his thoughts, the sound of bells faded. Whatever it was, draw was drawing away from him. He waited for a long moment before making to continue on. He was not sure where he was going, but he knew he had to be there on time. The mortuary servitor was waiting for him as he turned. The optic sensors within its funerary mass glowed crimson as it looked down at him. It was taller than him, but spindly. Its legs were oddly jointed lengths of metal, studded with sensor filaments, like the hairs on a spider's leg. The body was concealed beneath a ragged gr fr gray shroud, but Valimar could see something twitching within the folds. Unseen things whirred and clicked, and he could smell the stink of old incense clinging to the stiff, grimy cloth. The servitor's head perched at the end of an elongated neck composed of metallic vertebral segments. These rasped softly as the servitor observed him. Its golden death mask was wrought to resemble the round features of a smiling cherub. The automaton took a soft, scraping step towards him. Valimar held his ground. He could detect a hint of rotting meat beneath the omnipresent odor of incense. He did not trust machines, especially those draped in flesh. His hand fell to Lay's pistol holstered on his lap. The red gaze flicked down, following his hand, and then back up. Identify, the mortuary servitor asked in a sing-song, childlike voice. Valimar, Commissar Egan Valimar. I am expected. Valimar paused, wondering why he'd said that. As far as he could recall, no one was waiting for him. No one alive, at any rate. However, it seemed to have the desired effect. The servitor gave a binary grunt and clattered out of his path. It retreated into the mists, and soon there was little sign that it had been there at all. Valimar pressed on. The ache in his head receded as he came to a small plaza containing rows of beers. He'd seen other such plazas at a distance, dotting the cityscape according to some pattern that escaped him. He'd always been good at spotting patterns, even if he didn't understand their meaning. Each of the beers was occupied by a shroud-covered shape. He felt a chill as he passed through the rows, as if they might rise at any moment and demand his reasons for being there. He made his way towards the heart of the plaza, following the path. The mists thinned the further he went in. He heard voices, muffled, indistinct. He stopped and reached for his weapon. The mist parted and he saw two figures standing at the center of the plaza. They turned as he joined them, his hand resting on his holstered sidearm. The man was below average height and dark. He was clad in the heavy robes of an ecclesiarchy missionary, and his eyes darted nervously between Valimar and his companion. She was small in height and build, but sharp-faced and hard-eyed. She was dressed in the uniform of an Astra Militarum officer. She idly tugged at the edges of bandages, just visible beneath her sleeves. Valimar paused, wondering if he ought to salute. He settled for a respectful nod. She frowned, but returned the gesture. The little man thrust out his hand. Oswick, he said. Oswick Marcus. This is... I can introduce myself, priest, the woman said, her voice a harsh rasp. I am Field Commander Liana Venderson, first class. And you are? Valimar hadn't taken Marcus's hand. The little man pulled it back with a frown as Valimar concentrated on the officer. Commissar Valimar, I am expected. We're all expected, Commissar, Venderson said, though I don't have the faintest clue as to why. 
A puzzled frown spread across her features. Come to that, I don't... She paused and looked around, as if uncertain. Marcus nodded. You don't know how you got here. Neither do I. He looked expectantly at Valimar. Of course I know how it got here, Valimar said. He'd taken an instant dislike to the smaller man, though he couldn't say why. And the woman seemed nervous. But then, perhaps she had something to hide. Something she'd rather a commissar not know about. I was ordered to come. I... He hesitated. A ship, he said, finally. But he couldn't remember. He couldn't remember arriving. He looked around, seeing his surroundings as if for the first time. How had he got here? What ship? Marcus pressed. I didn't come to be interrogated, Valimar snapped. Then why did you come? Venderson asked. Again, Valimar paused. He'd thought he'd known, but now he found that he could not bring the words to mind. He shook his head. My orders are none of your concern, he said flatly. She bristled and looked as if she wanted to speak, but Marcus beat her to it. Why did any of us come? He looked back and forth between them. Do you remember being invited? He asked, looking at Valimar, then to Venderson. What about you? He looked around. Maybe it doesn't matter, he continued softly. We're here now, and may the god emperor keep us from harm. Venderson snorted. Valimar glared at her. Do not blaspheme. He looked down at the closest of the shrouded bodies. He peered at it, trying to discern the features beneath the thin shroud. They seemed inexplicably familiar. He reached for the shroud to pull it back, but stopped as he heard the clangor of bells. He looked up and saw the dim shape of a mortuary servitor standing watchfully at the edge of the plaza. Its red gaze honed in on him, and he pulled his hand back slowly. Venderson shook her head. They don't like it when you disturb things, she said. They make an awful sound, like someone skinning a gyrinx. They won't leave us either. They won't let us leave either, Marcus said. I tried earlier. They herded me back here. He rubbed his arms, as if cold. God Emperor alone knows why. Valimar saw more servitors creeping through the outermost beers, murmuring binaric prayers. Something about them set his teeth on edge. His head began to pound, and he rubbed his temples. I have a weapon, he said. Only one, Venderson said, patting an ornate laser gun with bayonet affixed. Maybe we should simply wait, Marcus said. Someone will eventually come. They'll tell us why we're here. And what if they don't? Venderson said. Why us? said Valimar. The others looked at him. He met their gazes, looking for any sign of falsehood, any flash of something that shouldn't be there. But there was nothing in their eyes save for a reflection of his own growing confusion. What? Marcus said. Why us? Why here? Valimar gestured to the beers. Do we share some commonality? He licked his lips, suddenly anxious. He felt the urge to run, though he could not say from what. What's the last thing you remember? he demanded. What do you mean? Venderson asked, warily. None of us recall why we're here or how we arrived at this place. What's the last thing you do remember? Venderson glared at him suspiciously. You first, Commissar. Yes, no, this is good, Marcus said quickly before Valimar could reply. We will each tell our stories and see if the answer is there. He looked at Valimar. You first, Commissar, please. Valimar shook his head. Fine. He studied the closest of the bodies. I remember. He smiled. I remember the sky was on fire. And that brings us to the end of Silence Part 1. I will have to do separate videos for each of the other three parts due to the length of this video already. Thank you very much for reading along with me. If you enjoyed this, please like the video, comment below any thoughts you have on it, or anything else from the Warhammer horror or other Warhammer stories you might like to hear me read, uh, and subscribe so you can catch the other videos once I finally upload them. Thank you again for watching. Let me get my mouse to work so I can actually end the video. <laughs>